Hello everybody, this is Salam Askar. I'm very happy to welcome you again in this new episode of Trends News. So, I will receive two of my good friends that you probably know, Skazi and Azax. Azax, maybe that you knew if you are from the first wave of party people as Azax syndrome, but he decided to keep only Azax because anyway, everybody called him Azax, as he will explain us in the interview. And he will also share with us a very crazy story that happened to him. And then in the second part of the show, I will receive Skazi, my very good friend since 96 or 97, with who I have a long history and many crazy stories. So actually, there will not be only one story during the Skazi interview. But before to receive them, let me make again a brief statement about the show. We have negotiations now for more than a week with all the staff, all the team. And that's it. We finally ended the negotiation and for now from now you can for sure share our videos to all your friends even if you didn't subscribe yet to the channel and listen it's not finished even if you share the video you can still subscribe later to our channel so you know what i mean eh? like uh, we will not stop in front of anything for you guys <laughs> so let's receive the first guest and i mean of course reggae from azax hello reggae how are you Hi Cedric, what's up? I'm good. I'm good. Surviving nice. the moment of the COVID. Yeah, exactly. What have you done since the COVID, uh, since the lockdown started? Like six months without party, like all of us? Yeah, well, it's it's tough, but you know, I still have my school and uh, private lessons. I teach everyone f uh, through Zoom now, uh, like from the internet, it's from all over the world. And I still make my music, you know, here and then. And uh, father for the kids. I yeah. become a chef also. How many kids <laughs> you have now? I have three. She? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have one who is only one year now, so. Oh, I know the feeling, man. Yeah, it's nice. Uh, so tell me, you change Azak syndrome to Azax. It's yes. shortened. Like, uh, yes, can you explain yes, us yes. why briefly? Uh, yeah, uh, because uh, everyone used to call me Azax, you know, it's like more uh, way of people yeah. talk to each other. And then I cut my hair and I said, you know what? Maybe it's a good idea to, to just remain Azax, you know, without the tail. <laughs> but did the music, I mean, when you changed the name, it was just the name or did you also change your style in the same time? You know uh, what I mean? I, ne I never changed my style. People think I'm changing my style. But, you know, uh, life for me is, is very uh, dynamic. You know, when I started making the music in 2004, I was very poor. No equipment, no nothing, and I was like, uh, I was very angry. So the music was much more aggressive, you know, and then the scene changed. I'm not the same person I was before, you know, uh, things happen to me. So every two years, every EP, every album, I change a little bit, but it's still Asax, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's not a change. It's just the, the logical evolution of your music. Maybe different textures, maybe, you know, because we say uh, when you make everything uh, flat, you know what is flat line? Yeah. It means that you're dead. A life is up and down, <laughs> up and down, and very dynamic. Yeah, I agree so, with this idea. Yeah. Nice one, nice, nice way to explain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so tell me, with all those years of traveling all around the world and playing in parties, if I ask you now to choose, like, maybe not the best, I know how impossible it is to choose the best or your favorite, but is there a party now that happened in a, like a, a special location that you know, you, when you were playing there, you were thinking, wow, this is really a cool job. Uh, yeah, there was many. I know. Uh, you know what? Uh, here is one. Uh, I played in San Francisco Love Parade, I think 2009. It was, uh, I, I arrived there with the, with the family of my wife, and I was two days without chewing bubble gum. <laughs> and, then, and then I arrived to the place, to San Francisco, and first time for me there you know it was huge place man like maybe 300,000 people on the street police there wow. people smoking everywhere and I tried to find uh, my uh, truck that I was playing there I saw dead mouse there I saw everyone there and I wanted to, before I play to, to do something you know so this guy gave me some whiskey this guy gave me some you know chewing gum and this one gave me some this and it was my time to play 300,000 people and I can't move I'm like I'm too stoned, man. I tell the guy, maybe, maybe you play another song, maybe you play another track, so I can reset myself, you know? Wake up, wake up. And then it was killer, man. It was like, uh, for me, it was like a rock uh, concert, you know? It was not 
any familiar yeah, to yeah, Side Fantasy Fair. It was totally it's different. Before, but after the first track, I mean, once you press play, that's it, you are in. Yeah, 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 exactly. Then, you know, with the years comes wow. the experience. <laughs> But it was amazing because it was like it was like a fucking rock concert. People were pogo dancing there, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was insane. Yeah, in the US, the scene is a bit different, and anyway, it was more now like a, a street festival. So this is always different. You have all kind of people. You need to please yeah, everyone. Yeah, man, it was it was huge. This is what I remember: huge crowd and people were pogo dancing. It was insane, man. The vibe was like something else. It was not a party. That's it. So many parties, but you. There is especially one moment that I really remember. Well, really? let's watch the screen like a few seconds. Okay, okay. <laughs> I guess you remember this moment. Man, what happened exactly? How did you feel when the guy jumped and was in front of you, you were playing? How did you, I mean, do you remember wow, the exact wow, moment? Wow. Yeah, 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 man, this, this, this was a... Uh... Man, this was a, a story because we drive, the driver was late, yeah? We drove maybe two hours in the night in the dark to the party. We arrived there and the guy before me, I think some EDM guy, you know, and he was playing EDM. And it was maybe 10,000 or 15,000 people. It was, I think, Cyclos in Brazil? I'm not sure. And anyway, yeah, I think it was Cyclos in Porto Alegre. And all night long, these guys got house and EDM and uh, then it was me, the first guy to open the side fronts, yeah? So I, I, I press play, was a big intro, and then a lift, and the drop. And in the first drop, I see the guy coming from the, from the crowd, and man, the stage was maybe three meter high. I don't know how he jumped, and he made it in two steps. One, two, boom! And, and he's falling on, 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 on the CDJ. Lucky for me, I was playing from the computer, so it was on the side. And ah. I remember I tried to stop him, not, 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 you know, not to, to get the, the faders down of the mixer. And all the wow. guy did, he, was, he, he just did like, he wanted a kiss. <laughs> he just wanted the kiss, you know? So I hugged him and turned him away and I screamed to the guy. I think it was Udi from Upgrade. I like, make sure no one beats him because, you know, uh, security can kick his ass for it. Yeah, but man, yeah, the guy course, just came and wanted a hug. Well, actually kiss. you reacted very cool. I don't know how I would have handled this. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, it's a I sudden was shocked. shock. Certainly, you know I, was, the guy man, wants. I was after two hours drive. I sleep in the car. I wake up. We arrive to the party with my bags. On, you know what I mean? I arrive with my bags on the stage, and the guy turned around and he said, "One minute. One oh, minute. Yeah, I have yeah, to connect yeah. everything. You know, we everything was in feeling. pressure. <laughs> I didn't even drink. I asked the guy, can I have some Red Bull vodka or something? And then boom, <laughs> you know, the guy jumped. First thing, and I know that my set will be uh, weird because I, I'm. You know, it's like you wake up and someone smack you in the face. And I know exactly, man. <laughs> I know so exactly. It, was, <laughs> it is a good story, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, but as I'm sure that you have also some crazy story, but in the other way, like maybe a crazy that you were a little bit scared for yourself. Let's now begin. I mean, now it's a new sequence in the show that I introduced to you. Is the crazy DJ Live stories. Okay. Crazy DJ life. So, uh, I remember like uh, a few years back, I was, uh, you remember the times of Japan? So, uh, yeah, Japan is already funny. So, uh, I was playing, I think, in uh, Mother Hall or Zep Osaka. You remember Osaka, huh? And you know, Japan and all the friends is there on the stage and the party is rocking and people are crazy. It's Japan, you know? And I was drunk and everything, uh, blah, blah, blah. We just made so fun. And I finished my set, you know, I was all hyped up and we go outside and everyone, ah, Zaksu, ah, Zaksu, respector. You know the, the vibe, yeah? So we go back, me and some friends, and I saw, uh, I think it was a uh, white Mercedes or something like this, yeah? And it was the same car that we drove in, but I was, you know, I was, I was happy and energized and everything and I want to make fun. So I just ran and opened the door in the back and tried to get in. And the guy was like, Hasekshu, no, no, please, please. And I, I didn't know what it, what, 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 what's going on. So I just entered the car and the second I put my feet down, some guy put me out and there is a sword. You know, a big katana, Japanese sword on my neck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> 
what's going on? And then the, the Japanese ran after me like, Oh, Oregaishimasu, I know Oregaishimasu. They started talking to them in Japanese. And apparently this car was, uh, was the car of the head of the Yakuza in uh, that area. <laughs> and they thought I came to attack or something, but then it gets complicated because you know Japan and Japanese people, they're not letting go to this such a thing. There is no, you know, for everything you do, you need to pay, you know, there is no easy way out. Like, sorry, I made a mistake. I'm a gaijin, I, I didn't uh. know. No, now it's a story. And we go to the other place, you know, we sit there and all the time I'm sitting and there is two Japanese guys, you know, like bodyguards sitting next to me and I'm trying to move and they're like, no, sit, stay there. <laughs> You're not moving until we, we clear what's going on. And lucky for me, the guy I was working for, uh, he called his boss. He have uh, also his own connections, you know, with the Yakuza. And to tell the story short, uh, we just needed to pay something, some fine. They wanted my finger. <laughs> they wanted my finger. But, you know, lucky for me, as he told me, uh, my boss, bigger. So I was lucky to, to, to get out of it with just uh, a fine that they pay or I don't know what, what they resolve. You know, the Japanese never told me exactly what price they, they had to pay yeah, for yeah. rescue me. But man, it was insane. I mean, the night that you sit there in, in, a, in a dark lounge, you know, the Yakuza lounge, they took me there with, with my two friends and the promoter of the parties. And you sit there and you don't know what to do. And for me, I was, you know, for me, it was funny because, yeah, fuck them, Japanese, you know. <laughs> but, wow. but man, I tell you, I was that short from uh, losing my finger or my neck or I don't know what. And man, lucky, lucky. It was, it was, uh, it was funny. And then I, 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 I did go. And since then, you know what? Uh, I learned uh, you need to respect others. Uh, other people's civilization and, and culture, not, you know, yeah, we like to make jokes, we like to make fun, but try to make it uh, more uh, intimate, you know, with with our friends and not involve the neighborhood, because we used to go, you know, to I bars and... To this lesson before to travel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but man, we were young, you know, and I think this is one of the, the benefits of us being DJs, that we get to see the world and, and evolve as, as human beings, you know. Exactly. So that's my crazy story. Through, through some insane stories like this one. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Regev. It was very nice. Yeah, thank you, Cedric. I had a lot of fun. What a story, man. What a story. Wow. <laughs> but you see, you see, and you know already, and that's why I do this, this new sequence in the show, because all the DJs have stories like this. I yeah, guess. man. <laughs> we have so many stories. Uh... So as you could see, wow, that was a really crazy DJ live story from Azax. But now let's uh, receive Skazi, my good friend. And just before to invite him with us, let me resume briefly how I, I know him and the first time we met. It was actually back in 96 or maybe 97, one of my first times in Israel. I was playing there, I was a young kid and and I, had, I was playing with my friend Nomad and you know in that time there was no hotels for the DJs and for the artists. It was very underground, the, 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 the beginning of the Goa trance movement. And we were staying most of the time in the sofa of the living room of the promoter. That was the case anyway in that time, but we had an argue with the guy because he was an asshole anyway. If you hear us. And so we decided to take our stuff and to go in Tel Aviv and we were hanging around in the park. Wow, shit, what, what are we going to do now? Where are we going to sleep tonight? You know, it was even hard in that time to afford an hotel. And then we heard, oh, Cedric, Nomad, oh, but we look, and it was Asher. Skazi was here, he was with this dog, you know, in the park and he recognized us and then he invited us, you know, for one week in his place and then, believe me, for the next 10 or 15 years, Every time I was going to Israel, most of the time I was going to Israel, I was going to stay with Asher, my friend, and I met him much before Skazi and even before he was learning how to DJ. And that's why we are still now very good friends. So let's welcome him. And as you will see, we have some stories in common. So instead of a full crazy DJ life sequence, I think there will be few stories in the full interview. Let's watch this now. Hey, hello Asher, thanks to come for visiting us, <laughs> thanks to visit us anyway. I'm very happy to welcome you. How are you? I'm amazing in those days actually, uh, you know, what is amazing? I'm in the Corona vibe, 
We all now uh, in a situation of uh, of stay home. I'm already like almost seven months, six months already at home. Yeah, like all of us. But but you get the COVID. We don't. <laughs> Yes, you know what? Uh, unfortunately, I got the coronavirus, the COVID-19. I was sick for three weeks at my house. I had all the side effects. I had all the full story of the coronavirus. I got, I lost my uh, taste and smell. I had fever. I become crazy. I have all the side effects, actually. I cannot remember thing good. I'm confused. Uh, you recover now? Yes, I'm now recover away, I believe 100 percent from the COVID, but still I have the side effects. It's, it's, it will stay for a while. You are ready to get attention from anywhere, huh? <laughs> yeah, I can get attention even from the COVID, man, I tell you the <laughs> truth. I'm one, one of the first uh, yeah, one, one, the first actually the first DJ in the world that get the coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> Why I'm not surprised, you know? In the beginning, I see the change in you with the airport security, you know. In the beginning, I was hiding your name. Then, you know, when you became a little bit famous in Israel, I can say, eh, what's the purpose of your visit? Eh, I go to visit my friend. What's his name? Skazi. Okay, open your bag. <laughs> and now, the last time, you know, eh, with your friend, eh, Skazi. Oh, can I speak with him on the phone? You know? <laughs> you know what I tell you about this? People uh, know that I'm doing uh, Psytrance music for many years, right? This kind of the style of that I do. But uh, lots of things happen here in Israel in these years that uh, people in the world don't know. They don't know that I've been part of a TV shows and I've been part of even a reality shows. Yes, uh, I, I did. I did some uh, prime time uh, shows uh, like uh, Ninja VIP, you know, stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. this here in Israel. And actually, I just came now from a, from a panel in the main channel here in Israel. I was part of a, of a conversation panel of a one hour and a half, you know, when you sit in the studio and they talk about news and shit, and I'm there, you know. I don't have so much what to say about this because I'm a non-politic guy, you know. But I, I can talk about my things, how I see things in this time of the corona. You know what I'm doing now in those days? I'm, I'm doing a campaign for a energy drink, XL. I'm the main presenter and I did my first uh, can, SCSI can of XL. Well, I'm waiting for it. <laughs> four days, man. Keep in one four for days. Me. I might come to Israel soon. <coughs> in four well, days. Soon. Well, soon. In four days, the campaign is coming out. So it's going to be 5 million SCSI XL energy drink. Man, it's cool. Man, yeah, it's crazy, man. Is, every time we speak, you know, I cannot stop thinking about all the time that we spent uh, when I met you and all the evolution of your career and mine too in the same time, but now different ways. But it's so cool, man. You know, when you, I'm so happy for you, you know. L listen, we need to do, we need to do something. You know, it's not enough to be artist in those days. You know, you, you need to be a multi-talent. You need to do many things if you want to stay in the game you have to first of all do good music second you have to do more things you have to be like more social you have to be more more in a way commercialized you have yeah, to be like that too. i remember sometimes yeah, i but... tour in brazil i have more equipment in my bag to shoot videos with the drone and the camera and everything than to play the music with my two usb keys in my pocket you know <laughs> there you go it's not mean how, how small is your your usb but they can be full of bombs. But I can tell you that the big change that I feel that happened to me, uh, first of all, one of the biggest changes happened to me now, here in the Corona. But before that, when I started, uh, I was very hardcore, trans punk guitars. And then with, with the time... Yeah, underground. But then little by little, I saw your evolution because I met you before even you began to be DJ and I saw all the evolution. Man, I am impressed, you know, really. Like, oh, you, uh, you don't know, but this guy is like a machine, you know. He can stay in the studio so many hours just focusing two days maybe, you know, like, and every day and for years. This is why he's Kazi. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? What happened to us now? It's it's a really difficult situation because you know we've been together all of us in many big things. We've been in the SARS, we've been traveling at the time of 9/11. But something like how they stopped the world with the corona, 
I never saw it in my life. But what it's, what it's changed about all musicians in this time, I can tell you, because now I cannot release bangers of dance floor. So what I'm doing, all my collaborations too, that I did with Omiki, with Blessed Toys, and one that I released in the end of the month in uh, Ultra Music, it's the, the music is less banging because there's no dance floor. The crowd now is sitting at home. So I, I try to figure it out, how to bring the music still to be relevant in this time of the Corona. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know exactly no what you mean because I'm doing ambient now. I cannot make so much trends now because I know there are no parties. So, you know, there are no goals. Even if I make one, I release, it will not be played in a party. The motivation is not the same. Yeah, it's totally changed now. And I can tell you something will happen after this Corona that nobody knows, but I believe it's going to be a, a very big change of, of the scene, of the music, of the people, because we're losing now one circle of people, man, of one year. You know, to lose one year circle of parties and, and people and audience, it's everything's changed. People change their the music style even in that time. I mean, the crowd. Of course. You know what course. I mean? Okay. Uh, well, we make music, I mean, when we make music for parties and there are no parties, there are no point to listen to this music because this music is being made to be danced in parties anyway. Absolutely, ah, absolutely. <laughs> oh yeah, first of all, you know, I, I had the crazy, I had the crazy stories uh, with girls on stage. This happened to me more than one time. I can tell it's very quickly, but I'm more crazy than that. Because you know what? There is, there is, there is so many stories happened to us in, in this period of time that we are playing, that it's not even logic. Uh, first of all, I, one time I was uh, talking with a girl, you know, and things, you know, I don't know, it was say it nice. And then I didn't call the girl anymore. I come to the party, I played, this girl was jump on the stage, run to me, slap me in the face in front of 20,000 people and go. So that, that was, that was, that was a, that was a story that I will never forget because I get slapped in my face in front of of everyone. Oh man. She go like, and then she sent me a message. She go like, you have to know who to, uh, who who to, uh, um, how she call it? Oh who man, to ignore. Must be a video of this. You have to understand Is who you ignore. Any video? Oh my God, you crazy fuck. So anyway, that was one of the stories. I have, I have so many stories that happened to me, you know, in that time. But that I don't think some, that I can tell you. know, tell like them. some scary ones sometime, you know, like, uh, you know, like the police stopped the party you were playing in a country that, you know, it's it's not cool. Oh man, the police. Oh man, the police stories, I had them so much. It's funny because one time, I think we've been in Sweden, I, 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 if I recall nice, and the police was jumping on the party, right? And in that time, we had the place in Amsterdam. You remember we had the place in Amsterdam? Yes. So we was flying from Amsterdam to Europe, to other places. So the police jump on me and go like, you know, in Sweden, they go like, you smoke weed! And I said, for sure you smoke weed, it just came from Amsterdam. And they go like, no, you smoke, you have weed. I said, no, I'm a DJ, I don't have weed, but I just came from, do you use drugs? I said, yeah, in Amsterdam. <laughs> just came from Amsterdam. And the, the, the police didn't believe that I say yes, you're supposed to say no. Yeah, they are not you used to it. I, mean, I know, man, I do no. this all the time. But you know, I, I, when, I, when I stopped to smoke, when I stopped to smoke weed, it was, I think, five or six years ago, it's more make me funny, you know, I, I laugh because first of all, less people, they, they less stop me because I less look like a, I don't know, like a hippie or something, you know, I look more like a, like a regular guy, I think so, maybe. Yeah. Sounds no, for me to judge. Sounds for me to judge. <laughs> I don't know, but I, okay, maybe tattoos and this, but I look yeah, like maybe, more maybe. like, like artists, they tell me what you are, like a singer, or what, what are you? So I'm a DJ and I go like, okay. The, 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 the story about the DJs, what was before and what is today, it's different. Today, DJ have a big respect near what we was doing because we was playing in, a, in like a side trance acid parties and that was the status yeah. of the DJ. Yeah. You know what right. I mean? Today, it's changed, you know? I mean, they look at you, they go like, what are you doing? I'm a DJ, international DJ. They go like, okay. And you see that you fly in like business class and they check this stuff, they see this. They more chill out, you know, they more relaxed. They, yeah, of course, they, they, also we say, are not 20 anymore. When we were 20, traveling the world with all the rings, uh, space stripe t-shirt, fluo for me, and you like a punk, 
Of course they arrest us. You know? I mean, if I was a cop, I arrest myself. <laughs> yes, for sure, but today, but today, today you can see no, the... Look, yeah, even I like to believe I look almost normal. What you look mean? always the same. You know what, since I know you, you look always the same. You look ridiculous with the SCSI t-shirt. This is for yes, sure, Yes, I know, that's why I put it. But man, it's very old one. You know, yeah, it's the old logo even, cool yeah, I see it, it's the old First of all, I want to say, we have, we have such a big history, I don't know if people know that we know for many years. Yeah, well, I tell them, we from 97, I guess, we, I, we met. Yeah, even a even little bit, yeah, 97, something like this. We, we started uh, our friendship so long time ago, so we have so many stories, crazy stories together. One of them is really this one in, in, in uh, Mexico. Oh, the one with the earthquake, when we've we been together in earthquake in Mexico, yeah, in Eagle's place, out in the building, the and we had to run because everything one. was moving. Ah, in Eagle's you know place, what? yeah, when it was moving in the building. Yes. So you, you know, went we, to we the window to check, and it was, no, not to the window. <laughs> <laughs> you remember we, we work on a track, uh, Who Touched My Baseline? Exactly. I remember why we, yeah, yeah, why we call right. it like this. Of course. You know, after this uh, 10 years or something like this that it's happened, I want to tell you a secret. Okay? I'm listening. The secret is like this. We, we was working on the track Who Touched My Baseline. In that moment, that was the earthquake there. Everybody ran outside. I ran back to the studio. I delete two parts of the baseline. You and touched I the back. baseline. Why? You think I didn't and know? And then I would <laughs> touch the baseline because even with the earthquake, I changed the baseline. I touched <laughs> then I the came back into the studio. We touched the baseline. <laughs> we touched my baseline. <laughs> and this is how the track was born. <laughs> oh, yeah. so nice. Okay, I, th I think the story was. Uh... One time we've been in a party in uh, Montenegro. I remember, if I recall it good, it was in a submarine base or something like that. And then. Um... I was drunk after the party we, to remove to the party and go back. You have to go by a boat. And I decide, like always, that I like to be the captain. So I want to drive this boat, right? So I took the boat. The guy let me because, you know, DJ, I don't know how. How can you let a DJ drunk to drive this boat, you know, to, to sail? And he let me do that. And I was driving and I see the stick and I just put the stick in front and somehow the engine goes so strong and engine stop. We are in the middle. Somehow I think I blow the engine. We all stand there. Lots of people, very drunk, very high on the same boat. And it was a funny moment for me. So the Serbian people, even if something happened like this, they're always happy. These people are, you wanna stuck with Serbian guys and girls on a boat. Because you know that, that we stay, the guys will stay always happy. Hello, you good? Yeah, me too, me too. But uh, yeah, I'm a little bit sad. Huh? It's the end of the episode. Uh, little bit sad, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know the guy got interview. Yes, I know. But this, you know, we cannot force the DJ. Huh? It's everybody is freedom. Huh? Uh, this is what we want. Huh? Freedom before everything. <laughs> so, uh, yes, it's the end of this one. Uh, we will come back soon. Uh, but now it's a little bit uh, complicado. Porque uh, it's, uh, you know, lockdown pandemic. Uh, so it will be hard to meet with the team to edit everything. But anyway, whatever happens, I'm telling you now, we will come back with more guests and more everything, and more crazy life, and more bubblegum. So I see you in the next episode. Et à moi.